Welcome to the KTNP blog guide to Redwood National and State Parks. We're going to go over everything we experienced in the park, and we hope it helps plan your trip. The park protects coastal redwood trees, which are the tallest on Earth, but the park also has a lot more to offer. There are meadows, oceans, rivers, and forests to explore as well. Like any national park, there's a lot of recreational opportunities here. There's hiking, kayaking, biking, backpacking, camping, fishing, tide pooling, and horseback riding. We visited Redwood National and State Parks in the summer of 2017. Located in Northern California, close to the Oregon border, the park is unique in that it's a national park with three other California state parks. All the park land is jointly managed together. The state parks were formed in the 1920s and 1930s, while the national park was created in 1968. They were administratively combined in 1994. Jedediah Smith, Del Norte Coast, and Prairie Creek are the California state parks that make up the combined park along with the federal national park land. The parks are linked together in a patchwork system, which you can see in the map below, with the purple federal sections linking together the blue state park sections. All the parks were created for one main purpose, to preserve old growth forests of redwood trees. Those are trees that are very old and have never been cut down or disturbed. Let's take a closer look at each area of the park, starting from the north where Jedediah Smith State Park is. Jedediah Smith has some of the largest areas of old growth redwoods, as well as the Smith River for good kayaking. There's one developed campground called Jedediah Smith Campground that has a small visitor center inside it. The larger Hayochi Visitor Center is also nearby. To the west, there's another visitor center in the town of Crescent City, California, not shown on the map. Little Bald Hills Camp, a designated backcountry campsite, is further east. Now let's head south a bit and check out Del Norte Coast State Park. It features a lot of second-growth redwood forests after logging companies sold the land to the park. There is one developed campground called Mill Creek Campground. There's also a section that goes along the coast for beach access and tide pooling. Near the coast is a backcountry campsite called DeMartin Camp. This is the only section of the park without a visitor center, yet it's also the largest of the state parks. Next is Prairie Creek State Park to the south of Del Norte Coast. It features a lot of old growth forests and beaches. It also has meadow areas where you can frequently spot Roosevelt Elk. There are two front country campgrounds here, Gold Bluffs Beach and Elk Prairie Campgrounds. Close to Elk Prairie Campground is Prairie Creek Visitor Center. In the north of this area is the Flint Ridge Backcountry Campsite. Prairie Creek has a lot of hiking and trails and is well known for an area called Fern Canyon. The main national park section is the one farthest south and it is the largest of the sections. It's generally less developed than the state parks. While there isn't a large amount of beach access, Thomas Kekel Visitor Center is located along the coast. This district is home to forests and some of the largest redwood trees. There are no front country campgrounds, but there are a few backcountry campsites with Elam and 44 Camp. It's also the only place in the entire park where you can do dispersed backcountry camping along Redwood Creek. As discussed, there are four front country campgrounds in the park, Jedediah Smith, Mill Creek, Gold Bluffs Beach, and Elk Prairie. On our trip, we stayed at two of them, Jedediah Smith and Gold Bluffs Beach. Other than campgrounds, there is no lodging anywhere in the park. We really enjoyed Jedediah Smith Campground. It was quiet and we were surrounded by large redwood trees. The Smith River was next to the camp, so we were relaxed on the beach. Also, the bathrooms had reliably hot showers, so that was a nice bonus. Sites are $35 per night, and there are also basic cabins available for an additional fee. We also liked Gold Bluffs Beach Campground, which is right on the shoreline. 
Our weather was kind of icky though when we stayed there, gray, cloudy, and cold. Sunlight finally showed up on the day we left. We would have liked a lot more if it had been sunny out. There is a solar shower at the campground too, but we don't think it worked that well. Old Bluffs Campground. Here is the campground. You can see some of the tents. And here is what really makes it special. Yesterday it was very foggy, thick fog, and it was cold, 50s or so. Today the sun's come out, the sand is burning my feet, and it's just beautiful. There are four visitor centers in the park, as well as one outside the park in the town of Crescent City, California. The entire park is completely free to visit, except for some day-use areas. Frankly, they probably should charge a little bit. Hayochi and Thomas Kiko Visitor Centers are the only ones you can get backcountry permits at. The Jedediah Smith Visitor Center is very small and is located inside the campground. The park offers a free half-day kayaking trip along the Smith River, which we highly recommend. There's only class 1-2 to two rapids in inflatable tandem kayaks, but it's a lot of fun. We registered as early as we could at Hayochi Visitor Center to get a spot. The day of the trip, everyone met at the Visitor Center, where we shuttled to the put-in. The trip ended at Jedediah Smith Campground. For a free trip, you can't miss it. Our hiking journey began at Lion's Ranch, which is the furthest south trail of any in the park. It's one of the harder trails to access. We had to drive 17 miles on Bald Hills Road, a scenic but dusty and partly unpaved road to the trailhead. The benefit, though, is that we didn't see anyone else on the hike. Lion's Ranch is different than almost every other trail in the park because it features wide open meadow areas with expansive views compared to forests and beaches. These areas were originally set fire to by Native American tribes to deliberately enhance the growth of acorns, berries, and grasses. Eventually, the prairies were used by other settlers and their sheep ranches. Lyons Ranch itself was settled by Jonathan Lyons and his wife Amelia, who started ranching here in 1873, before the land was sold in the 1960s. Some of the historical buildings that were used by the Lyons family are still here today. You can explore and go inside the buildings. The surrounding trails are a network of old dirt roads that we formed a loop out of. We really enjoyed the uniqueness of the hike when compared to others in the park. One of the most well-known day hikes in the park is a long 12.1 mile loop called James Irvine and Miner's Ridge Trails. This loop goes through old growth forests and was our first experience in the park getting up close and personal with some of the large redwood trees. It's a humbling experience seeing by how much these trees dwarf you. Keep an eye out for animals like banana slugs. get down there if we keep going. Okay. While the trail initially goes through some redwood forests, it eventually reaches Fern Canyon. This ravine is 30 to 50 feet deep with walls covered in ferns. A small stream flows through it and you can hike into the ravine. It's a unique place you won't find anywhere else, but it does get crowded as there's a day-use parking lot nearby.
After the trail leaves Fern Canyon, it then goes by the coastline and passes Gold Bluffs Beach Campground. You can hike along the beach or along a road until you get back to Miner's Ridge Trail. The trail to the beach has standing water when we did it, so we opted to hike along the dirt road. This whole hike is a lot of fun and offers a lot in one trail. Start early, since it's a longer one. Damnation Creek Trail. We kind of laughed when we first heard the name of this one. The hike descends from redwood forests all the way down to a rocky ocean beach. It's really beautiful, and if you're there at the right time, you can also do some tide pooling. And whenever you're ready, you can hike back up a difficult 1,000 foot elevation gain, undoubtedly the reason for the trail name. Take your time if you need it, but we didn't find the hike back too onerous, and we really enjoy the dichotomy of the forest and ocean. Driving down Howland Hill Road. It's very narrow and windy, and people like to stop in the middle of it <laughs> to take pictures, including us. Um, but as you can see, we're surrounded by tons of redwood trees. Our next hike was on Boy Scout Tree Trail, located in Jedediah Smith State Park. To get there, you have to drive on a dusty, scenic road called Holland Hill Road. This out and back trail weaves through old growth forests. Along the way, there's also two large redwood trees that have merged into each other. This supposedly looks like a Boy Scout salute, thus the name of the tree in the trail. At the end of the hike is a small waterfall called Fern Falls. If you're short on time, there are also shorter trails, like Stout and Ladybird Johnson Groves. They're only a mile or two and feature large, old-growth redwoods with some informational plaques and guides. Both are great options for a quick hike. Personally, for us though, we found that they weren't as impressive after hiking some of the other trails in the park. We only had time to do one backpacking trip while in the park, so we decided to do one along Redwood Creek in the National Park section. This would allow us to do dispersed camping and camp right next to the creek. Everywhere else in the park has designated campsites. We also wanted to check out Tall Trees Grove, which is a special forest area with some of the largest redwood trees. There's a gate that prevents access unless you have a code to a lock, which you get at the visitor center. There are two trailheads that could be used for backpacking in Redwood Creek. 
We could either start at Redwood Creek Trailhead or Tall Trees Grove Trailhead. We chose Tall Trees because our car would be safer there behind the lock gate. There are reports of cars that have been broken into at Redwood Creek Trailhead, and a park ranger recommended parking at Tall Trees. Our whole route was an easy-going backpacking trip, as the total mileage was only about 6 to 7 miles over two days. We'd start at Tall Trees parking lot, then go down to the Grove, before hiking north along Redwood Creek until we found a spot we liked to camp at. The next day, we'd head back down south, see the part of Tall Trees Grove that we hadn't seen the first day, then walk through Redwood Creek until reaching Emerald Ridge Trail, which returned to the Tall Trees parking lot. A day before our trip, we got our backcountry permit and Tall Trees access code at Kekel Visitor Center. The day of our trip, we drove along Bald Hills Road until we reached the Tall Trees access road, and unlocked the gate to drive to the parking lot. We descended about 1,000 feet on Tall Trees Trail until we reached Tall Trees Grove. A loop trail is formed around the grove and we went along the top path, which then brought us to Redwood Creek. The creek has seasonal bridges installed at points where it's too deep to cross. Otherwise, we waded through it. Essentially, the creek itself is the trail. We highly recommend water shoes and trekking poles as they were invaluable. We hiked for a bit until we found a gravel bar that we liked and set up camp. We saw many frogs and toads along the way, as well as an unidentified mammal running away from the creek. We initially thought it was otters, but we really don't know. For drinking water, you're supposed to filter tributaries that flow into Redwood Creek, as there could be harmful algae in Redwood Creek itself. The next day, the skies got cloudy and it drizzled a bit. We headed back the way we came until we reached Tall Trees Grove again. This time, though, we went along the bottom of the loop, and then came out onto another part of Redwood Creek. Yeah. Well, now we know why there's so many frogs here, huh? No kidding. We hiked through the creek until we reached Emerald Ridge Trail. It was a challenge, but also it was a lot of fun. If we didn't want to get soaked, we had to make sure we didn't go too deep as we went from gravel bar to gravel bar. Sometimes we had to backtrack until we found a shallower route. This is a unique hike that I'll remember for a long time, and it was one of our favorites in the park. But yeah, it looks like we can make it Definitely. There's another beach after that. It's my hope. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi, future children, people on the internet, whoever might be watching this video. We're insane. But you already knew that probably. <laughs>
We didn't know how much we'd enjoy Redwood National and State Parks, as our trip out to this area originally was just for Crater Lake National Park, but we enjoyed ourselves immensely and recommend this park to anyone. We didn't get to do everything we wanted, but that's how it usually goes. We had also wanted to check out the Mill Creek and Dolson Prairie Trails to name a few. That'll have to wait for next time. For detailed information on everything you saw in this video, please check out our website, ktnpblog.com. Thanks for watching, and please like or subscribe.